Hey guys, KP here. Today's video is gonna be jam packed with the 13 pages of what are required now in California to buy any piece of real estate utilizing a real estate professional. Not only that, I'm gonna go through the three additional pages that are also to a part of the agreement. And most importantly of all, who pays for what and how do they get paid? As a special bonus at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how to structure everything in your real estate transactions so that your buyer's agent is taken care of. Also too, how to get some additional things paid for, like do you want some new flooring, possibly some new kitchen appliances? What about some landscaping? I'll show you how to roll that into your real estate transaction as well. If you're new to the channel, make sure to tap that like button and make it blue. Also too, subscribe and hit that bell notification I'm going to navigate through the entire California Association of Realtors forms. The BRBC is a total of five pages with everything else associated with this agreement either being disclosures or addendums. The first paragraph identifies the right to represent and has the buyer's names along with the broker who will receive any compensation from the purchase. Paragraph two is the heart and soul of the agreement and contains the majority of the terms, such as the timeline for representation, which cannot exceed three months and the exclusivity of the agreement. Most brokerages prefer that you have an exclusive agreement. And if this is the case, you will also need to initial paragraph 15 at the end of this agreement. Discuss with your agent the benefits of exclusive versus non-exclusive representation. 2B has three sections that define the type of property to be acquired, which is typically a single family residence unless otherwise indicated. You can also indicate the county of the home and any specific city. To see if you would like to further identify a particular type of home using the additional buyer identification of preferences and priorities form. Paragraph 2D allows the buyer to identify any properties that should be excluded from the agreement. Paragraph 2E is most likely the most important part of the agreement for all buyers. It indicates the amount of compensation paid to the broker and the length of time after the agreement expires that the broker has a right to be compensated. Make sure that you thoroughly understand the percentage of the acquisition price and use an additional compensation schedule if needed. 2E2 does state that the broker can receive this compensation from the seller or others, so you as the buyer are not obligated to pay the entire amount or anything for that matter if the seller or another party pays the broker compensation. F indicates the notice that needs to be given for the agreement to be canceled. If this is an exclusive agreement, it will be canceled after 30 days. If the buyer's financials are required, paragraph 2G can be used to state if any additional forms are required. 2G2 has additional financial considerations to determine if the buyer does not have sufficient funds to pay the broker. There are also some types of financing that do not allow the buyer to pay compensation to a broker. And if those types of financing are being used, they can be identified. The final section is H other terms in which any additional terms can be stated. I would strongly urge all buyers to utilize the other terms to their advantage or discuss this provision with a legal professional. Most of the additional pages on the agreement are standard language as per the California Association of Realtors. But if you require any terms to be specified or additional addendum, they can be included in other terms or added to paragraph three. Paragraph four is the compensation to broker and states specifically how all compensation will be paid. Make sure that you fully understand paragraph four or consult with an attorney. We do have an attorney on retainer if you have any legal questions. Most payments are completed through escrow and are dispersed at the conclusion of the transaction. 
One common misunderstanding for buyers is that it will somehow cost more to purchase the property when using a broker for representation. But on most transactions, this is not the case. Sellers ultimately decide what price and terms to accept, and having expert representation is to the buyer's benefit. I'll let you review these standard provisions, and if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. There is also some standard language in the agreement that I'll explain completely so that you can be informed on which paragraphs are most critical to you. On to paragraph six, which is the disclosure regarding agency relationships. This disclosure is crucial to anyone who will be representing you. It basically states that an agent can represent either the buyer, seller, or be a dual agent who is representing both buyer and seller. The agent has a fiduciary responsibility to provide the buyer with the utmost care, and everything is discussed on this two-page disclosure, although page two is the civil code, and you can read the code if you'd like or discuss everything with an attorney. On to paragraph seven, which advises the buyer about signing multiple agreements, conflicts with other brokers, and the limitation of representation. Paragraph eight states the broker's obligations and how the broker will assist the buyer during the agreement. Experience is the key and performing everything required to complete a successful transaction. In paragraph nine, the buyer obligations are stated. Basically, it is the responsibility of you, the buyer, to act in good faith, provide the information required to obtain financing, and take reasonable care to complete everything in a timely manner. If you have any concerns, always provide documentation to the broker in writing so that everything is kept on file. The goal is to find the ideal home, negotiate the best price and terms, and close the transaction so that you can move in. If there are any unforeseen circumstances, almost all agreements in California have an attorney's fees clause and a provision for mediation, which is typically the least expensive option for resolving disputes. This BRBC agreement can be canceled by either party, so hopefully any disputes are resolved amicably. My goal as a real estate broker is only one thing, happy clients that thoroughly enjoy their new home, plus we love going to the housewarming party. If you chose to be represented exclusively by the broker, then paragraph 15 will need to be initialed. Again, make sure that you completely understand the benefits and drawbacks, along with the compensation and cancellation clauses. Paragraph 16 is the confirmation of compensation and is filled in directly from the clause in paragraph 2E. If you would like to revise the compensation, make sure that the correct amount is revised in paragraph 2 and then that exact amount will be displayed in paragraph 16. Prior to the signature block, there is the ability to choose if the buyers will be represented through an entity, typically a limited liability company or a trust or other legal entity. If this is the case, make sure that the entity buyer's clause is checked and fill in the appropriate sections.
Now it's time to sign. The buyers and brokers sign the agreement on the bottom of page five. We will also discuss the other addendums and disclosures that comprise a fully complete buyer's representation and broker compensation agreement. There are several, and it's extremely important to review everything so that you understand everything entitled to you. The Buyer's Inspection Advisory is the next form included by the California Association of Realtors, and this advisory emphasizes the importance for you to perform any and all inspections that you would like to ensure that you receive expert opinions and analysis prior to closing the purchase. Your real estate professional can explain which inspections and companies provide the best services. Ultimately, you want to ensure that you don't have any surprises after the home purchase. And if an investigation yields a negative result, you can always cancel or renegotiate terms of the purchase. Next up is the Broker Compensation Advisory, which states in detail how the listing agent and buyer's agent are compensated in a real estate transaction. You may be surprised to find out that the listing agent may receive a bonus compensation if the buyer is unrepresented, which is just another reason to ensure that you have a professional looking out for your best interest. You will definitely want to familiarize yourself with the advisory, and as you know, all compensation is fully negotiable and must be in writing. Paragraph 3 is the most important part of this advisory and states how the buyer's broker's compensation gets paid and most importantly, by whom. The majority of all real estate commissions used to be paid by sellers and negotiated during the listing of the property. The seller may still pay real estate compensation for brokers and other entities when selling their property, but it is not required. It is extremely important to discuss with your real estate broker how to structure your offer so that any and all compensation for services is presented in writing during negotiations. You need to be aware of who is paying closing costs, commissions, and fees associated with the transaction. These costs are typically paid in one of two ways, either by the seller from the proceeds of the sale of the property or from the buyer through closing costs that are required to be deposited to escrow prior to the purchase of the property. An experienced real estate broker can save you thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars in closing costs by structuring the purchase agreement so that the seller pays for most or all of your closing costs. Not only can your closing costs be paid for, but improvements to the property and financing may also be included on to the disclosure and consent that it's possible for the broker to represent more than one buyer or seller. The agent representing you is typically working with several potential buyers and sellers. It's always a good idea to understand that another client that they are representing may have already seen a property, but do make sure that they have not submitted any other offers on a property that you are making an offer on so that there are no conflicts of interest. The California Consumer Privacy Act Advisory notifies you of all of the civil codes in California that protect your privacy. If you have any questions, you can read through this one-page disclosure. The buyer identification of preferences and priorities is not required, but you can include it if you would like to ensure that the broker only receives compensation based on specific criteria and all of the red sections on the form are available for you to fill out, if you would like. The broker's objective is to locate the best property in your budget, and this form may limit their ability to do so. Again, it's optional and can be reviewed anytime. The buyer's financial and personal information form is also optional, and it allows you to limit the potential ways that the broker would receive compensation based on your specific finances. You may review this one-page form at your leisure, and if you would like to include it in the agreement, you can complete it and return it to the broker. And that brings us to the final optional form, the additional signature addendum, Typically, I only see this form included if there are more than two buyers purchasing the property. It is a very basic one-page form for additional signers. Whew, that was a, a long one. If you haven't already, make sure to tap that like button, also to subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification so that you get notified whenever I release new videos. Now, how do we get that buyer's compensation paid for so that you don't pay your broker anything for finding you that perfect home? 
Here, when I'm ever negotiating a purchase agreement for a buyer that I represent, I'm structuring everything into the purchase agreement so that all the commissions, all the fees, all the closing costs, even improvements to the property can get paid for by the seller. This is something that we always do. It's something that I've done as an investor for a really long time when it comes to real estate. And I always provide this for my clients as well. There's no harm in asking that the seller pay for everything. If for some reason you just get your offer rejected flat out, you can always submit a new one. But we ask and we get this 99% of the time. I would say that this is something that you should always talk to your real estate professional about prior to entering into a buyer's representation agreement. Also too, when you're structuring that purchase agreement as well, go with somebody that you know, that you've trust, that's been doing this for years and years and years and has that expertise. If there's anything that you need real estate related, always feel free to schedule a quick 15 minute private consultation with me or any of the team members here. I look forward to seeing you on the next video and thanks for watching.